we're going to be fishing what I consider to be the number one area no matter where you're at on the river. So let's jump right into today's video. So the first thing we want to do is start getting our speed and start getting our boat straight. So I'm going to use my Minn Kota. Uh, this is a, actually an Altera, Minn Kota Altera. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get us going. I'm going to start get a little bit of speed. I don't want a whole lot. Um, just slow us down just a little bit. And I'm going to use the autopilot. And that is going to be in Legacy. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that drift sock out. I got a little drift sock. Now we don't have a whole lot of wind. You can see the wind's pretty, uh, pretty calm. That's the reason I got my fan blowing back air. But that drift sock will help pull us down the river and help uh, the trolling motor by allowing the trolling motor to use a little bit more speed the, uh, for the drag that's going to be coming off that. And then we'll get the rods out. Now we've cut our speed from 1.1 down to like 0 0.5, 0 0.7 uh, miles an hour. I've got the troll motor on three. I've got the legacy iPilot kind of in the direction that I want to do, and that'll allow me to fine tune it a little bit, but I really want to stay right smack dab in the middle of this river. First up, skipjack. Second bait, moon eye. Now one of the big tickets to this is organization. You guys hear me say this all the time, keeping things organized. I've got everything organized in the back. I've got my uh, everything laid out, my planter boards laid out, where I want them to be, the side I need them to be on. Got all my bait cut. The next step for me is to go ahead and bait every rod. Before I put a bait in the water, I wanna bait every rod. And I wanna stagger those. It's gonna be skipjack, moon eye, skipjack, moon eye, all the way across. Now, whenever I hook these skipjack heads, I run it through the bottom lip and out through one of the nostrils on either side. And it kind of holds that hook at an angle and kind of helps it keep from turning back in itself. Got a small chunk of moon eye. I'm gonna hook it straight through the belly, just like that. Now, all the rigs we're using today are pin squall 20s spooled up with a 50 pound slime line. This is a medium heavy Hellcat. And then I've got 80 pound heavy cover leader line. If you buy anything from Catch the Fever, feel free to use discount code SLUNGER10 to help me a little bit. I make a little bit of money off of that. And then the rigs we're using are just slip, rig, slip rigs or anchor rigs from Slunger Cat Outdoors. Uh, this one's actually got a float on it and a ADOP boss cat. All right, the next step in this process is to get your first rod out. The first rod is the most crucial in this whole uh, situation. So you want to get it out and make sure that it is vertical or just slightly getting pulled back by the current. That's the ticket. Once you get that right with, your current, with the speed of your boat, then you can set up all the rest of your rods. Uh, the first one's the most crucial, and then the rest of them will go from there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna free spool it down to the bottom. And then once it hits bottom, I'll make sure it's got good contact with the bottom. And I'm using 10 ounce weights to make sure that I got a, I can slow the boat down to where I need it to be. Sometimes you may even have to use heavier weights than this. All right, so I got good contact. And I want it about two cranks up off the bottom. And then I'm gonna set it in the rod holder. And you can see my line is just barely pulled back with that 10 ounce weight on it. That is perfect for, my, for me, okay? Now, once I set the rest of the rods up the way that I want them, I know that as long as that rod or that line is doing exactly that, then the rest of them out there underneath the boards are going to be doing the same. It's very crucial to have the same amount of weight on every single rod that you put out there. And I want to do the same thing to every one of these rods. And it takes a little bit to get them out, but this is a killer, killer technique. 
And I'm gonna let it hit bottom, and I'm gonna reel my rod tip down to the edge of the water, and then I'm gonna do two cranks. And then I'm gonna slap my planer board on, and I want my board to be about a foot below the tip. And then we just let her free spool out the back. Now why that one, why this one on this side is spooling out or free spooling back, I can go ahead and do one on the other side. This is a lot of work, a lot to keep up with. Um, always keep in mind while your lines are going out of where your boat's positioned. You don't want to get too far one side of the river or the other or up on a shallow ledge. So these, this is a depth sensitive thing. We're at about 21 foot here, and this will stay about that 20 to 22 foot all the way down through here, smack dab down the middle. Now I'll have, I'll have two that are just straight down beside the boat instead of putting them all on boards. I'll run two down straight down uh, originally like just dead sticking. And the great thing about this is you can really cover a lot of water and you're still presenting your baits in a natural presentation going back the river. 